and welcome back into our Bank Plus studios. Time now to talk about the Appalachian State Mountaineers and their head coach, Sean Clark, is with us. Oh, great to visit with you, Coach. And two of the bona fide stars in this conference, Joey Aguilar and Caden Robinson, standing by with Rocky Boyman. Going to hear from them in just a few moments. But, wow, how the narrative has changed. I mean, a year ago we sat here after the season you'd come through the year before, and we were wondering, you know, is App State going to be able to get back? And you guys reached the championship game. It's a far cry from where you were a year ago. Can you definitely say App State is back? Well, I don't, I'm not sure if we ever went anywhere. You know, we stumbled our toe a little bit along the way. But, you know, we start off three and four uh, this season. We lost four games by 17 points. And we had the lead or had a chance to take the lead in the fourth quarter. And then things didn't happen. And then you know, we had to make a decision as a program and to go out and do all the extra things, make sure we compete at a high level. And really, these two young gentlemen I have today with me with Joey Aguilar and Cade Robinson really set the tempo and the expectations we have for our program. We are able to win five straight and uh, make it to the conference championship game and then have a, a great victory in the Cure Bowl versus Man of Ohio in a, in a tropical storm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, you guys didn't go anywhere. I think people started to wonder if you guys had gone anywhere. But what keyed that turnaround from the three and four start, all the close losses, like you mentioned, you know, four by 17 total points, and then to win five straight to get to the championship game against Troy? Well, first and foremost, our confidence has gotten better. Yeah. I mean, you look from top to bottom. When we first got here, we knew we were going to win eight games in 2016, 2018. The conference got better. We got Marshall in our conference now. Uh, James Madison, Southern Miss. We've added a lot more talent to the uh, to our schedule. So, um, again, really just about getting the right kind of people in our program. And we have that. And we're excited for this season. 2024 is going to be a great season for the Mountaineers. Yeah, Coach Charles Huff, when he was here, you know, compared the Sun Belt East to the old SEC West that he used to coach in, called the Sun Belt East the toughest conference in all of Group of Five, would you concur with that? Without question. I think we have one of the toughest conferences in all of college football, not just Group of Five. So I'll put our conference against anyone out there. But, you know, the Sun Belt East, we also have rivalries in that game. Old, old games, Marshall, Appalachian State, JMU now, Georgia Southern. So you're playing for a lot more than just a win on Saturday. This time a year ago, as we mentioned, you know, we, there were a lot of questions about App State and where they were going to go and where they had been and, and one of those questions was who the quarterback was going to be and it wasn't Joey Aguilar as we sat here a year ago but it is today the uh, offensive player of the year in the preseason uh, tremendous first season in your program coming out of Diablo Community College what have you seen from Joey as he gets ready to come back for another season and this time as the offensive player of the year well I got back to last fall camp this is a true competition uh, between him and another quarterback, the other quarterbacks went on, but with Joey came in his first play in their, his college career and threw a touchdown pass. And then, you know, I think with Joey, he's learned that uh, a check down and throw the ball out of bounds is a, is a good play sometimes. He has a strong arm. He can go from hash to sidelines. He can throw the deep ball. He's got great touch to, to the football. So uh, check down your running back, punt every once in a while, and don't turn the ball over in the red zone. Had more touchdown passes in a 12-game season. Only two players had more touchdown passes than him in a 12-game 12, 12 regular season, and that was uh, Jaden Daniels, who won the Heisman Trophy, and Bo Nix, who was a first-round draft pick in the NFL. Pretty uh, pretty impressive company to have your name involved with. I would say so. And, again, he's, he's a great teammate. That's what I'm more proud of than anything. He's um, you talk about leadership and, and being a role model. You know, leadership to me is not when – you just do all the right things. When people gravitate to, towards you, and our players gravita gravitate towards Joey, and he's a great ambassador for our program and a great football player. How is it that you guys always seem to have next man up in the running back room? I mean, you got Kanye <laughs> Roberts coming in this year, second team. Not coming in this year. He's been with you, right. but he's second team running back. But when I say coming in this year, he's now the guy in the running back room after what he's been able to do. Well, I think you have to be able to run the football to win championships. You have to be able to run the football and stop the run. And we take a lot of pride in running the football at Appalachian State. But we're going to play to our to our talents. And, and right now we have a very talented quarterback. Our receivers, to my opinion, are still the most underrated group in all of uh, the Sun Belt. We have great tight ends, great running backs. We can make sure the offensive line does their job and gives us a chance to succeed on Saturdays. Yeah, offensive line is where you do have some question mm -hmm. marks, I suppose, in returning in, in, in the amount of players that you don't have returning. We'll touch on that in a moment. But let's hit that running back room. Caden Robinson's here with you in NOLA this week, and we'll be hearing from him in just a few moments, but not just him, but Christian Horn and also Dalton Stroman. A, a lot of talent coming back, and that's a reason why you guys are probably the overwhelming favorite, certainly to win the East 
and probably to win the conference outright. Well, again, it's, it's always be good, uh, good to be picked first. You don't get to pick last. But, you know, the, the preseason accolades are nice, but we have to go out and prove on the field every Saturday or Thursday whenever we play in the Sun Belt to, to make sure we have a, a chance to win, on, win those games. But uh, our, our kids are prepared. I know they're excited. It's going to be a fun 2024 season. How about Eli Wilson, also your tight end? He's part of that offensive line mix, also part of the pass-catching mix as well. All Sun Belt first team in the preseason. I did a game against, uh, did a game at your place a couple of years ago. You guys played four tight ends in the game. I mean, yeah. four tight ends played in the game. We'll, Most we'll programs don't have four tight ends. We'll continue to do that. Uh, again, we're, Eli's a great player. He gives the ability to, to flex him out and, and make sure he gets one-on-one um, -on -one coverage with a linebacker. And he, Eli's a He's 4-5 all day long, so uh, again, he, he does a great job in the blocking, but he also does a great job downfield in, in the open space. How about your offensive line, too? I mean, that four new starters coming back on your offensive line, but you have 10 offensive linemen who came to your program from high school, nine who transfer in, seven of those came from power conference schools as they transferred in. So what's the outlook for your offensive line? I like our offensive line. I think uh, Coach Cummings is prepared to see those guys compete. This is the first time since I've, this is nine years we haven't had an offensive lineman on the either preseason all-conference selection or all-American selection. But, again, those guys have a great work ethic. I know they're up for the challenge. So, again, we have a few returning players from last year. Markel Sanders played a lot last year. Uh, Caden Sweat, who was a redshirt, he's going to be a redshirt freshman. Uh, I think he has a, a very high ceiling this year. Uh, Thomas Schrader transferred from Florida State. We have a lot of guys ready uh, to play, but it's going to be about competition uh, this fall camp. Sadly, one of the offensive linemen who would have been returning, who earned all-conference honors, uh, last season uh, passed away tragically in April. How has your team dealt with that? That's a it's a large obstacle to overcome the death of a teammate within your program. How have you guys dealt with the impact of that? Yeah, it's unfortunate. Anytime you lose someone in your program, uh, it's heartbreaking. And when you're in charge of your program, it's tough to swallow. But uh, we're going to celebrate Jack and the way he lived and uh, go out this season and play for him. Yeah. Nine starters back on defense. One of them, the youngest, uh, you know, one of the youngest is the best, Nate Johnson, who comes back, Sun Belt, all first team, outside linebacker, uh, earned freshman All-American honors last year, really made a ton of plays for you, 43 total tackles, seven and a half quarterback sacks, eight and a half tackles for loss, number one in the nation among true freshmen in quarterback sacks last year. Do we have to say this on national TV? Yeah. No, he, he's I uh, get what you're saying, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think I'm breaking any news. No, you're not breaking news, no. Uh, and Nate, he's an app guy. I mean, he got to, he got to Boone. He was 6'5", 190 pounds. Now he's 6'5 and a half, 6'6", 240 pounds. And uh, with the length he has, uh, he's a big-time player. And we're very proud to have him on our football team. And we expect big things this fall from Nate. Yeah, how much of what he was able to do, 37 quarterback pressures, how much of was he that he was able to do was just natural ability as a freshman, or was he just really that good at maturing and growing and adapting to the program really quick? No, he's he's a very talented kid, and that's something that, that the good Lord gave him, and it's hard to coach that kind of talent. But you know, just the way he plays the game, it's important to him. It's important to him to be a great teammate. The way he he plays the game, he plays with passion. And uh, he celebrates the people around him. So that's what makes him special. Yeah, Johnson plays on the outside. Caden Wilson began last season on the outside. You moved him to the inside position. And it looks like it paid off well for you because he had a breakout season. We did. We changed our defense midway through the season to get the best players on the field. And, again, to me it was about team speed, team speed to get your best players on the mm -hmm. field. It doesn't matter. You can't pigeonhole. He's only a linebacker. He's only a safety. Let's make sure we get the best uh, players on the field at once. And, and that paid dividends for us toward the end of the season. Yeah, that, that trans, as you mentioned, the four games at outside linebacker when you moved him inside, finished with 64 total tackles on the season. Yeah, made a big play versus Southern Miss. Uh, uh, made a, a sack there in the end zone. We, we scored the next play. It really turned our season around. So, uh, Caden Solomon was a great player, a great ambassador for our university. Yeah, preseason all Sun Belt first team cornerback. Ethan Johnson also returns after an all-Sun Belt uh, second-team honors last year. Made a huge jump from his freshman to a sophomore season and uh, had, uh, you know, 953 snaps on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Ethan, he, he's a very special player. Again, I played with his dad at App back in the 90s, and I've known him since he's been a baby. And uh, just to see how he's matured uh, and the way he's, he's really improved his craft and gotten better uh, year in and year out. And, again, the stats don't show because the ball's not thrown to him that much. Yeah. So, But uh, he's played a lot of football at App, and 
Again, we expect big things out in this season. Well, it was thrown to him enough to have 11 PBU, which was sixth in the Sun Belt, and he was the Defense Player of the Week in your victory against James Madison. This came up big for you in a big win. Yeah, he finally got a pick. We had to yeah. with that, but he, uh, that was a big play to, to really help us win the football game. He's also a very physical cornerback as well. Had 42 solo tackles, which is rare to see from a cornerback. Yeah, he, he, he's a big, strong kid. He plays the game the right way. He can really get in pressure. He can play zone. He can play man coverage. So it gives us a lot of different things we can do on the back end when he's in there. So, um, we, like I said, we, we expect big things from him. He's a great leader for our defense, and he's a quiet kid, but he plays the game the right way. How about Georgia Southern cornerback Seth Robertson? You were able to add him to the mix, one of the few players you brought in through the portal. It looks like he's a guy that can help you out. He played five seasons, I think, with the Eagles, now joins you for a final season. Yeah, he was recruited by Scott Sloan, who now is our defensive yep, coordinator right. now, and then went to the transfer portal. We were in need of a, a corner, and – we brought him on a visit, explained to how we do things at App, and, and he wanted to be part of our, our program. So um, he's been there through a, through a summer. He's really a, he's really turned some heads in some ways, and we, we expect him to compete for a starting spot this year. Joining him in the secondary, Jordan Favors, another guy that's earned preseason all Sun Belt first team honors. He's a guy that just seems to have a natural nose for the football and create a lot of turnovers. He enjoys playing football. He loves to play football. That's the the best thing about Jordan Favors is man, he always has a smile on his face. He loves it. He plays physical. You know, and really last season he, there were some critical areas he made, but man, he really stepped up, took ownership of those and got better week in and week out. He's a preseason all conference player. And again, he is one of the leaders in our defense. And you bring in Miles Farmer, a safety transfer, who I think played four seasons at Nebraska, last season at Syracuse. But he's a guy that comes in, has made a lot of plays, just not for your team yet. No, a big, talented kid. We, we recruited his brother. We signed his brother. Uh, his parents wanted both <laughs> brothers to play on the same team. And again, well, that was that was just part of the plan. You get his brother to sign his brother, Bucci. He's a nose guard. <laughs> and he's got a, a, a bright future ahead of him at App State. But he come Miles in and... He went through spring practice. I mean, he's that biz, big physical player that can come down to the boundary and fit the gaps and make a tackle for a loss if, if needed. Always big when you can get the parents to be a part of the recruiting process, right, and help you recruit. That's right. If we get the parents <laughs> on campus, it's hard to beat out state. <laughs> Defensive line, you see a, a young, dynamic preseason, all Sun Belt first teamer coming back in defensive end Santana Hopper. Man, what a specimen he was. He really came on uh, after the third game of the season. So I think he was second team all conference player last year. Uh, you look at Sean Collins, who was injured the, the fifth game of the season last year. He's back full speed. Big Mike Fletcher, um, Marcus Clark. The list goes on. We signed some kids out of the transfer portal. I mentioned this earlier. Our conference has gotten bigger and better. So we had to go out and, and get bigger players. Now, when I first got here, 6'2", 260 pounds was big enough. Yeah. But now if you're not 6'2", six, six, 300, you're going to get knocked around. So I know Coach McGann did a great job with the portal to get two more nose guards really set an anchor on the offensive line for the offensive line. So uh, I think that's going to be one of our strong points this season is our defensive line. Yeah, Hopper earned freshman All-American honors, and he comes from a family of Hoppers. There's Hoppers all over college football. There is, especially in Shelby <laughs> County. <laughs> yeah, and they uh, in, in college football, I think there's one at Missouri right now, which is a cousin, cousin of his. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was amazing. Uh, these players, you mentioned Collins, who came in, you know, after three seasons at Rutgers and had an immediate impact. Yeah, didn't play much at Rutgers, came was a starter at App, and then, like I mentioned, he was injured um, in the Marshall game. He had a sack and tore his uh, a pec, and, but again, he's full speed ahead right now. Big Mike Fletcher gives us that length. You go back and watch last year, Mike Fletcher really had a great game against James Madison of really collapsing the pocket and making sure McLeod to get rid of the ball quick. So you add that, Marcus Clark, a few transfers, then again, I think that'll be one of our strong points of our defense this year. When you're identifying players in the transfer portal, portal, how do you how do you isolate that player who, like, you know, played at Rutgers, didn't get on the field very much, and recognize, well, this guy's got talent and can help us because sometimes they don't get on the playing field because they're just not very good. And sometimes they don't get on the playing field just simply that they just haven't had that opportunity. They got guys in front of them, they got hurt, whatever the case may be. So how do you identify those p players in a short amount of time because the transfer portal window is a short amount of time you got to make an evaluation. Things happen in a hurry in the transfer portal. But, you know, one thing we do is we try to find someone on staff that we know and we trust. Then we go back and watch their high school tape. And could, could we recruit that kid in high school? Right. And if, if we can't, then that's an upgrade to our, our program. And then sometimes they get lost in the shuffle. Sometimes at the Power 5 program, if you can't play immediately, 
you're pushed to the side. Right. Well, we are we, we are this thing called coaching, developing players, developing men. So for us, we, we can come in, we develop them, and they, they have great careers at that state. Yeah, there's, that's a great point. I've heard power conference, or we can't develop players. We don't have time to develop players. So if there's a player that arrives at their program that needs developing, they're out of luck. Right, and that, that's where we step in, yeah. and, and that state's your place. But, yeah. you know, you go back and watch your high school tape, what are some redeeming qualities they had in high school, and how would that translate to us? And then, you know, you watch their, their, their uh, either their game tape or their practice tape from the college they're transferring from, and you make a decision. We call them OKGs, our kind of guys. We bring them on campus as our kind of guys, fit in the locker room, great uh, locker room men, then they're one of us. You have a lot of OKGs because you're picked to win the Sun Belt East. Let's take a look at your schedule here in 2024. Going to open up against East Tennessee State, just right across the mountains on the other side of the mountains. Buccaneers coming in to play you guys. And then you're at Clemson at East Carolina and your conference opener on a Thursday night against South Alabama. Yeah, they don't make it easy at that state. So, uh, again, that's going to prepare us for the non for our conference uh, schedule we get started. But you look Cle uh, ETSU, Clemson, East Carolina, and we have uh, Liberty, then South Al. So uh, it's four tough games, but again, we're excited for this. We got a great home schedule. Uh, there'll be a, a sold out stadium at, at, at the Rock this fall. And our, our fans are, are a big part of our success at App State. Y'all kind of made that a regular thing, selling out the Rock. And you know, I get the emails all the time. This game's been sold out and that game's been sold out. Rocky, take it over. You got it, Matt. I'm sitting here next to not just two of the best offensive weapons in, uh, in the of App State, but also in the entire Sun Belt. You have quarterback Joey Aguilar and wide receiver Caden Robinson. Joe, I want to start with you. What a difference a year makes, right? Yeah. This time last year, you weren't the established starter. You go on, you have a phenomenal season, newcomer of the year. Just describe where you are, not just in your offense, but as a quarterback a year ago compared to now. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, coming in as a backup wasn't really nothing new to me. I mean, Geeko. I just started. I just started at first. Ended up taking the job as well. So, beating that situation, it wasn't like I was startled or or like in a weird position. So I just knew I had to work harder, and it just pushed me to drive a little more. But from there to now, I mean, I grew as a player. Obviously, uh, like Coach said, learning how to take the next play. And uh, Coach Poncho always says, every drive ends with a kick. So there you go. Absolutely. Um, now look, a lot of folks talking about App State, not just the potential to win the Sun Belt, but maybe be one of those teams to represent the G5 in the college football playoff. Do you, do you guys talk about that as players and coaches? I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, we don't really try to focus on the outside noise. We just try to buy in on what we got going on and our goal for the season. So our goal is obviously to make it back to the championship where we were last year and we came short. And obviously be that last that 12th team to make it to the playoffs for sure. You guys return a lot of firepower on offense, but who's maybe the biggest new addition we can expect to see on this offense this year making plays? New addition? Uh, I'll probably have to say our, our receivers we picked up, uh, um, Zay and Will, definitely new guys coming in. Uh, and then we got younger guys, sure. Zay coming in, hopefully get some PT. but. Everybody's working. I mean, Makai Jackson stepped up late in the season as well. Christian Horn coming back. Tay Raw, Michael right. Hetzel, all these guys came back. So we're pretty loaded sure. all around. And, Katie, I do want to talk with you. You know, 900 yards, what, 10 touchdowns last year. Just describe what makes this offense so deadly. Him. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with him. I mean, he, he believes in us, and coach calls the plays, but he, he makes them. So I just try to be in the right spot at the right time and, and make a play. Now, I asked you earlier, you watched that Netflix series, Wide Receiver? Yes. What, what does a, a young college star watch? What do you gather out of that show watching some of the best NFL wide receivers go about their business? For me, I look at how they prepare, how they prepare for a game, for a season, just how they attack the offseason because offseason for us is big. you got to be able to, like Joey said earlier, you win in the offseason. You don't want to wait till the last minute to start start um, making 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 sure you're, um, like, ready. So if you if you uh, start fast in the offseason, it'll, it'll – Pay off in the end. Very good, guys. Thanks so much. Best of luck this season, Matt. We'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Rocky and Coach. Thanks a lot for Thank visiting with Appreciate us. It. Look forward to watching the Mountaineers play 